religions. And that Buddhism had, um, I find the text for that one, can you see that? The, the Naga of the Snake Cave is what I thought that was. Yeah, that's, it's got a second name. Well, it's Aigla. Oh, okay, so Aigla. So all hey, right, well, I regard this as the Naga of the Snake Cave. Now, this is really interesting. The Buddhist caves, in order for p parents to stop their children going there because they think that they're, they're satanic, you know, the Muslims are so anti any other religion, they've told the, uh, the children that the people who are in the caves were snake worshippers. And this is because originally in the caves there were all these Buddhas, and the Buddha is protected by Nagas, which are snakes all around them. And so this is a very primitive interpretation of Buddhism to, that it was an evil thing, that they were snake worshippers, and the kids believe that they'll go up there and they'll be bitten by satanic snakes, and this is how the parents keep them away from them. And um, yet, uh, what we're trying to do at the Yellow House is to get a kind of balance. So th this society is um, intolerant, won't accept any other religions, and it's totally out of whack with the feminine. So women are not outside, it's all masculine and so on. And so um, th this thing about it kind of like reawakening the energy of the past, you know, this, the, the, the had, um, so the Buddhist caves on the other side of the Kabul River to Jalba are now empty ca caverns and tunnels with every, uh, with every trace of Buddhist art and sculpture which once adorned and destroyed, yet the presence of the sacred place, um, which once held a relic of the skull, you know, that's the place where the skull was, is still awe inspiring. While the material decorations have gone, the individual invisible remains. This is what I was talking about, this is what I tap in. Local children are being told the caves were, in, were once inhabited by evil snake worshippers. Uh, this is because of the Nagas, and so we explain that to you. So the interesting thing is when the kids do go up there, even though they've destroyed, and uh, the, I've got a book on um, <coughs> the, uh, these caves, right up until like the 70s or something, they were rich with you know, beautiful sculptures, and the caves were actually covered with gold leaf. Uh, it's all gone, and now the kids if they do go up there, it'd be naughty. They, um, they're even taking the shape out of the caves. They, they just bang into the sides of the cave walls to make them formless. And they just can't destroy them enough, you know? Like mm. They've gotten rid of the nagas and everything else. And um, I've got uh, an exquisite little Buddha that you'll see in the, the, um, the films, which I bought of someone who'd saved it, you know, from all that. And I've got a... What's the elephant day? Um, the elephant one. Ganesha. 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 I've got a Ganesha as well. But interesting things happened to me recently. So when people were young, they remember when the caves were covered with gold and golden statues and things, and it's all completely gone. But when we went up to Tora Bora, the worst of the Taliban, who were now converting, and said, you know, George, we've got to do blah, blah. And, um, between you and I, we've got a lot of these Buddhas and they're hidden, you know. So one of my trips back there, we're going to go and see them. We might be able to... So they haven't necessarily been smashed. Some people actually believed in art enough to think, we're going to go and find them and maybe someday they'll be safe. And so they're starting to come out to me. So maybe I'll be responsible for getting some of these out again into the museum. But, um, so I don't think I'll ever get my two out of the country. I'll um, I'll be there for a museum.